in our study of church membership uh, while we were, uh, if you look at my office, I, I keep the door closed right now because my office looks like two atomic bombs went off in there. And, uh, and, uh, uh, um, as, as we, it, if you was to look in there, I have books everywhere right now. And, uh, so I, I really needed some more books. So we went to this conference and the first thing, all right, so a friend of mine, Jamie, he was helping me out and he said, they won't give you any books. So I said, okay. So I go up there and I do what I'm supposed to do. And the lady says, and here's your bag of books. And, uh, and so, uh, so I have this gigantic bag of books and that wasn't enough. Rankin twisted my arm and said, we need to go to the bookstore cause they got stuff on sale. Let's go over and see what they have. And so then I buy a sack of books. And, uh, so, uh, uh, anyway, lots of books, but Rankin actually, um, directed me to one that's also on church membership and, uh, so we may we may try to read some of that and put some of that with this and, and maybe have a little bit more uh, to, to say about it. With that said, uh, I think we got through uh, under point number two, I think we got through A, which is the New Te Testament churches kept records of membership. And I think that uh, we moved down to B and it says the commands of Scripture assume Church membership, is that where we at? That where y'all got us at? Good, because I didn't mark that, so I was thinking that's where we is at. So, again, take in, take in mind those bold letters there. The, the commands of Scripture assume church membership. Now, do you, do you have this back there where you've got the verses, or am I going to have? Okay. Okay. I, yeah, I don't know. I, I looked for them, and I, hadn't got, I, I couldn't find them. All right. So with that said, the commands of Scripture assume church membership. What kind of commands? Well, what did Jesus tell us about how people would know we as his disciples? Yeah, for what? Yeah, love one another. All right. So part of the, the commands that assume church membership is to love one another. So I just Quoted from uh, uh, John 15, I believe. Go with me to John. I, I think he's actually may he may key this up. But John 13. These are the verses I want you to put down. I have a whole list of them, but these are the ones I want you to put down. John 13, verse 34 through 35. Here we go. A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also Love one another, verse 35. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if you love, if you have love one to another. Uh, chapter 15, verses 12 through 17. This is my commandment, that you love one another, as I have loved you. Greater love is no man than this, than he lay down his life for his friends. You're my friends, if you do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant know not what his Lord doeth, but I have called you friends. For all these things I, uh, you have heard of my Father, uh, I have heard of my Father, and I have made known unto you. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, that uh, he may give you, give it unto you. One more time. Henceforth, uh, ye, ye have, oh. now, these things I've commanded you that you love one another. You think Jesus expects us to love one another. Okay. So now that was, that's what I want you to get out of, out of that. Now go to Romans 12, if you would, please. Romans 12. Larry me will get there before we do. But Romans 12. Starting in verse 9. So now I want you to listen. Verse 9 and 10. Let love be without dissim dissim There you go. Dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. 
cleave to that which is good, be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love and honor, preferring one another. So now that's in chapter 12. Now look at chapter 13, verses 8 through 10. Owe no man anything but to love one another, for he that loveth uh, another hath fulfilled the, his law, the law. For this thou shalt uh, not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is brief, uh, briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, that thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Loveth worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Now, let me ask you a question. Those commandments there, how many commandments are they right there? That's not where I'm looking at. Number nine, verse nine, thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not covenant. What, what, what part of the Decalogue is that? Okay, what does that concern with? Second six. The first one is children, obey your parents. <laughs> okay. So, so, first four is vertical. Last six, horizontal. He deals with five of the last six. He didn't do it, deal with children obeying your parents. What happens in those five? If, if I break one of those five, what, what, what am I doing? Right, why? You're putting yourself to a place where I, I'm entitled to what belongs to another, whether it's his reputation, his wife, um, what he owns, whatever it is. I'm putting myself above my brother. Okay. Now I will remind you in these, in this context right here, this is the church at Rome that he's writing to. He's not writing a general letter. He's writing to the church at Rome. Jesus is speaking to his disciples who are going to start the church movement. Okay. So we see love. Now, like I say, I got a whole bunch of them, but that's, that's, that's those. So it assumes church membership. How does it assume church membership? How would you how would you say that us loving one another assumes church membership? Who who's Paul dealing with? And what 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 is love? Okay, do you think Jesus loved Peter? Yeah. Absolutely. Well, did he ever correct Peter? <laughs> Constantly. <laughs> yeah. So, love is not just this goofy, I accept you as who you are. Love is deeper than just that. This is agape love. This is the kind of love that God loves us with. Law, what, what does God really want out of us? After salvation, what does he want out of us? Uh, 
Yep. But our obedience brings what? What does that, what does that do? Brings glory to him, but it also makes us what? Look like who? Yeah, it, it, it conforms us to Christ's image. And so not, not everything in Scripture is all lovey-dovey. We've heard this all week. You've got Sinai <laughs> and Zion, okay? You, you, you've got the law, and then you've got grace, all right? But, and we need to show uh, from, from Marty's perspective, I mean, from, from the pulpit and from each other, we need to show more Zion, okay? But, but the thing about it is we still have to have some law. If you're not a citizen, kind of hard bring any law to you, isn't it? Right? I mean, you see what I'm saying? It's kind of hard to, to do that without church membership. Church membership, love assumes church membership. It's, it's as you said, you're loving the brethren, especially in this particular context in Romans, it's to the church at Rome. And it's agape love. It is not philo. I philo my neighbors. I do. I philo everybody I see just about it, as long as you stay out in front of me in, in the car going down the road. <laughs> but <laughs> learn a lot about your pastor when he's Yeah, yeah, he did. He did. They didn't want to be the sermon illustrations. <laughs> I'll be the sermon illustration. I feel oh, everybody. I try to talk to everybody. I do. I find people just to talk to. I wander up to them and say, hey. <laughs> you know? And they think I've lost my mind. Okay. But I do, I, I, I just, I'm friendly with just about everybody. And, uh, but this is agape. This is a godly kind of love. And the only way you can have a godly kind of love is to be from God. Okay, that's the only way. The Bible says that. You've got to be born again to have that kind of love. Okay, so anyway, um, Let's move on. I want to get one more, and I know I'm late, but just, just bear with me. I, we, we went a little long because the preacher was long-winded in talking about everything he was doing, okay? Seek peace with each other inside the congregation. That, that, that assumes church membership, okay? Here we go. You're in Romans 12, right? Or 13, right there, right there at it. Look at 12, 16. 12, 16. Be of the same mind, one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceit. Who wrote this book? Romans. Who, who wrote Romans? Paul. Okay. Okay. Just remember that. <laughs> okay. Look at chapter 14. Let me read you another verse here. Okay. These are the two I want you to, to remember. If you want more, I got a whole bunch of them. Romans 14, 19. Let us therefore follow after things which make for peace and things wherewith one may edify the other. Who wrote that? Okay. Y'all remember back in the book of Acts? Paul's got this workman that he works with. It's, it's the man that actually brought him into the ministry. Do you remember him? He was highly prized in the early church because he sold all he had or sold a piece of property he had, and he gave it all to the church. All right? And here he is. He heard about this man, Saul, that has become Paul, and he knew that God had called him to the Gentiles and when they were going to send some missionaries to Gentile, he summons Paul, bring him to me. And he goes with him on his first missionary journey. Remember that? Yeah. Who was his nephew? John Mark. Did Paul and Barnabas get along about John Mark? <laughs> Okay, we're, we're to seek peace with each other, right? Right? Who wrote this book? 
Paul. Who got mad and left? Maybe not, but yeah, Paul left. Sometimes Christians disagree in non-essentials, okay? And in order to have peace, they have to pull apart from each other. And that's what they did. They started two different groups. God used it to multiply them and their ministries and to use their ministries in two completely different ways. And at the end of Paul's life, he says, and by the way, send John Mark to me because he is profitable unto me and the ministry. Okay. Barnabas took John Mark and he discipled him just like he did Paul. And made him acceptable to the brethren, just like he did Paul. But they had two different ministries. They had to go two different ways. See, sometimes we got ministries that clash a little bit. And we need to understand when, when ministries clash, we need to seek peace, but we need to seek God's peace. Okay? God's peace is not, I can't get him away. God's peace is, I believe God's leading me to do this ministry and this person, God's leading me to do this ministry and we're praying for each other and we're loving each other and we're doing God's work together, you see, but not together. Does that make sense? You do that inside the confines of the church because how do we get peace in most Baptist churches in Randolph County today? I'm mad with you. I'm going elsewhere. Right? We got, we got Christians. We have Christians that keep their books packed up all the time because they're always on the move. They're moving from one place to the other. Oh, I heard they got a good youth group here. I heard they got good music here. I heard God's really moving over there. Right? We just need to settle in a community. And when we got issues, we need to get together and pray about it and study God's word and study what we need to do and forgive one another of our faults. Confess when we're, man, Marty's wrong a bunch. But so are y'all. You know what I'm saying? We got to confess when we're wrong. Now, sometimes we just have to leave because there's not going to be no biblical kiss and make up, okay, if you would. But we need to show the love of Christ in our love for one another and in our way that we can find peace inside of God's church. Okay, and it comes when we're a member of something. We work through our problems because the something we're involved in is bigger than us. And the glory that gets seen is not in us. It is in Christ and in God. And we just reflect that. You know what I'm saying? I remember Dr. Clay Nuttall, and I'm going to stop with this, but I remember Dr. Clay Nuttall. I've heard two different men say this about being in a church somewhere, but Dr. Clay Nuttall, he, he was called to a church up in Michigan somewhere, and the church was a battle. He said they'd went through like, and I'm going to lie to you, but I, I think they'd went through like 10 pastors in like 14 years. I mean, they was just throwing them out the door. And so he's pumping gas. Now, you'd have to know Dr. Nuttall. Now, he's dead now, so you can't meet him. You have to meet him in heaven because I guarantee he's there getting things straightened out. But <laughs> he's pumping gas, and he gets to talking to the people pumping gas next to him. 
said, you ought to come visit church. I just came to this community. You know, I'm, I'm what church? And he told him what church. I wouldn't go there. I wouldn't go there for nothing. Them people, all they do is fight. Okay. Well, he runs into that several times. And so, Dr. Nuttall gets this vision from heaven, I guess. And so, he preaches on forgiveness, preaches on forgiveness, preaches on forgiveness. He has a homecoming kind of like we did. He called and invited the ten men that had been there in front of him. By the end of the service, all of the people that were members of the church had done come up crying, asking forgiveness of these men that they had treated so wrong. And Dr. Nuttall said, for the very first time, that church had the power of God on it in over 12 years. And he said, we start seeing people get saved. People, people heard about the forgiveness that took place in this church, and they started flocking in to the church. They wanted to see this themselves, and they got in there and got to seeing it for themselves, and guess what? God got a hold of them. People started getting saved, and, and the church started growing. And if I'm not mistaken, that particular church there, when he left it, it was almost 500, okay, in Michigan. That's some people with the turned around collars. That's their territory. Okay. Almost 500. Um, when we work through our problems and we show grace to each other and forgiveness to one another and, and admit our faults to each other, I, you know, bless your heart, I, I was just too strong in what I said. You know. I misunderstood what you said. When we, when we show that forgiveness, the power of God comes upon this place. I've said this. You know I've said it. I really, really, I want to have one service. Closed doors. Just church members. Downstairs in the fellowship hall. I want to have a Lord's table where we confess to each other our faults. If we got anything, any all against anybody, we tell them. If, if something's hurt me, we tell each other. We cry and we forgive each other and and. We, we come and we take the Lord's table clean. And it's nobody's business except the church's business. It's not, it's not the whole world's business. It's our business. And let's get this stuff off of our chest. Whatever it is. Because we all get a... Somebody steps on our toe every once in a while. And you just sit there and look at me like I'm crazy. But somebody steps on our toe once in a while. And we, our feelings get hurt. You know, I feel like I'm doing more than you or you, you slammed the door in my face. I was trying to talk to you, you know, or whatever, you know, and, and, and didn't even know I slammed the door. I didn't know I stepped on you. I didn't, I didn't know you. You know, I didn't know. A lot of times we carry that kind of stuff with us. And the person that we're carrying it against don't even know that they've done anything. You know? And then I want to have a meal because that's what Baptists do. I just think that'd be powerful. We, we take communion, and communion is about I'm in a right relationship with God, and I'm in a right relationship with my brothers and sisters, and bless God, we got the power of God in our fellowship. I just think that would just be phenomenal. Phenomenal. But we take communion and we tack it onto the end of a service and say, here's a cup, here's bread. Oh, okay, go on home. 
And we miss the beauty behind what it is. Okay, we miss the beauty behind what it is and what it was for. Let's pray, because I know y'all ready to go home. I got to sit here. I, I'm wound up, man. Y'all just ain't got no idea how wound up I, I could preach about 15 messages with just opening my Bible right now. So <laughs> I won't keep you that long, Joseph. Let's let's pray.